Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. If you take a close look at the Keller's Colossal Collection, you'll find there's a fair bit of prairie gold in the collection. Walter, tell us a little bit about this uh, Minneapolis Moline right here. Uh, this is the first uh, G6 uh, Minneapolis tractor. We had a uh, National uh, Minneapolis show here in 1995, right on this farm here. And uh, previous to that show, there was some articles in the farm paper. And I got a call from a party just into Minnesota. And he called me and said, oh, he's got the first uh, G6. And I asked him, well, what is the serial number of it? He said, well, number one. I said, well, I wanted to know the prefix of it. And he said, well, it's the first diesel. And I said, I'd like to have the prefix number because that's how Minneapolis determined uh, or separated one model from another. He said, well, call me tomorrow night. So I called him and told me it was 16000001. And I said, well, 160, that should be a gas. The engine must have been changed. I said, nope. He said, I drove the tractor off of the dealer's lot and he worked for a construction company that was road construction. He said, um, I drove it all my life. And he said, when I retired from the company, he said, if they ever sell it, he'd like to buy it, which he did. And uh, well, I talked with him, and we did make a deal on the tractor. And I went over there to pick it up, and then we talked a little bit more about it. And then he was telling me that the um, tractor was, like he said, drove off the dealer's lot. They used it, they wanted to overhaul it, so they went to the headquarters and to get the parts for doing it. And uh, they asked him for the serial number. And later on, the guy from out of one of the office came out and quizzed them about how they got the tractor. And then he related to them that the tractor was made as a gas tractor and being the first one, they didn't have the tag, serial tags yet for the G6. So you look at the tag and it's got GB on it, but they won 60001. And then he was telling them that they made that tractor and then they shipped it down to their farm, I believe in Arizona or Texas, and tested it. Then they brought it back and they put the diesel engine in it. And they ran that around their place and tested it. And then it was ordered to be scrapped. But instead of going to the scrap yard, like I said, and turning, instead of turning right to the scrap yard, it went left to a dealer's lot and then drove off into this uh, construction company. So uh, kind of a little story on that tractor and also with the serial tag having the GB number on it and being the first G6. That's a great story of how this G6 came to be really a, a diesel engine tractor instead of a gas the way it was designed originally. Uh, what, I, what else do you like about the G6? Well, it's a massive tractor. Uh, you had the four-cylinder Minneapolis, which was in itself a large tractor. But then when they came out with a six-cylinder, this G6, that uh, you sit on the seat and you look at the hood and it's a very long hood. It's a uh, massive uh, looking tractor. And Minneapolis Moline, uh, you've collected a fair number of those. What is it about the prairie gold that catches your eye? Well, I guess like every, every other tractor collector, you'd like to have a Minneapolis Udilex tractor in your collection. The one with the cab and so forth. And that's probably how I got started in collecting the uh, Minneapolis uh, uh, desire to get one of them and in the fact uh, years back uh, got a brochure for an auction with one on down in Iowa and I told a number of people I'm going down there to buy that one went down there and well this wasn't quite right that wasn't quite right but thinking back it was a very good tractor and then I uh, thought well gee whiz it sold for 13,000 and uh, that was a little bit too much so I didn't buy it but uh, shortly after that, they seen the ad for the uh, collector, Minneapolis collector, or Prairie Gold Rush magazine, and I ordered that, and the first issue that was in it had an ad for Udilex, and I went down to Illinois and did buy that and got started in Minneapolis. You like the Minneapolis Moline tractors? Well, 
I got them, I must like them. <laughs> well, there, uh, after you got into the Minneapolis, I had a friend that uh, called me and he said, well, you're collecting Minneapolis, now uh, you should have the Minneapolis Jeep. And I said, well, what's that? He said, well, Minneapolis is the first one to make a Jeep. I didn't know that. And he said he, he uh, seen the ad and uh, he said, I decided not to buy it. He said, I'll give you the number. You call the guy, but he's holding the tractor for me. So uh, I did buy the Jeep. And then a big John Deere collector from Minnesota was wintering down in uh, Arizona. He said he's got the uh, model JTO, the Orchard. I said, well, what's that? And uh, they was one of the first ones with the Orchard tractor with the full trim on. So, okay, that was real interesting. Wasn't able to buy that one from him, but I did get one uh, right after that. And uh, then you get to look into it, and there's low production numbers in a lot of the Minneapolis. Uh, so uh, that attracted us. So they made more industrials and more for the military than John Deere at that time. This G6 is a number one. Do you have more Minneapolis number one? Oh, yes, we do. Um, right offhand, we got the first ZAU, the first ZAN, and the first ZAS. And the uh, Orchard, uh, we have the first of that. And there's a couple others that we have the first ones. And now you got a whole building just all full of prairie gold. Is that right? That, that's right. Uh, yeah, I, well, excuse me. There's uh, one case and one international in it at this time. But... Uh, yeah, we have others that should be in the shed, but we don't have enough room right now.